Thanks, Dan. It's a pleasure to see everyone here in person. Almost three years since uh, we did in-person uh, meetings. So I'll go into, um, you know, mobilize first, uh, you know, achievements in 2022 and, uh, you know, our, our strategy going forward and also kind of the, the state of, of the field, both driving assist and autonomous, uh, autonomous driving. So in terms of our kind of achievement, uh, we took all the pipeline that we have it, uh, in, in the driving assist uh, uh, domain. It's about $17.3 billion uh, of pipeline up to 2030. It goes beyond 2030, but we had to put kind of a limit. So it's uh, 20, 2030. Uh, what's interesting beyond the sheer number of 17.3, that 6.7 billion of it was design wins of this year. Another interesting point here is our supervision. Already 70,000 cars have been shipped in China with a brand of Geely called uh, Zikr. Um, the, the CEO of Zikr is, is here, Mr. Mr. An. Uh, since we launched last year this product, we have now six car makers with, with, the, uh, with the design wins, totaling $3.5 billion of business up to uh, 2030. Uh, and this, this is very significant, significant for, for two reasons. One is the, the content per car is two orders of magnitude higher than the content per car in terms of dollar money per car in our regular driving assist. Uh, second, it's a bridge for autonomous driving. In terms of our mobility as a service, we see the business for our robotaxi self-driving system up to 2028 for $3.5 billion. We have uh, $1.5 billion from a single, single brand. Uh, I put here line of sight. Definitive agreement has not been signed yet, um, but it, it's very, very solid. So, so first, we see that there are two kind of landscapes. One is the robotaxi landscape, the other one is the consumer AV, and they are very different in nature. The big difference, and we're talking about the robotaxi, you're talking about a full ODD, because you are driving from point A to point B, and you need to cover all possible scenarios, unprotected turns, traffic lights, pedestrians, urban environment. So it's a full ODD but limited in, in, in geographically, so it's a geofenced area, and so forth. So you can start adding in more and more ODDs, but it has to drive everywhere. You cannot say it will drive only on roads of San Francisco. It has to drive everywhere. So it's, it's a very different, different problem to, uh, to solve in terms of scalability. The state today of robotaxi, I think the challenge is not technology. There, there, there's no kind of scientific or technological uncertainty with building a robotaxi. It's more about a matter of scale and building a healthy business. Another point to make is let's assume that you invested in robotaxi. Now, can you downgrade the technology to consumer AV? My answer is yes, but the robotaxi should drive everywhere. That means at some point in the future when your robotaxi has been validated to, to drive on all cities in the US, all roads in the US, then of course you can downgrade it to a lower cost say, specific ODD for consumer car. So for, first, I'd like to set a taxonomy. So the taxonomy that, that the discourse today is level two, level three, level four, this, this taxonomy is good for engineers. It's not good to, to kind of uh, talk about a product-oriented uh, uh, language. So the way we, we, we created our own language, that there's nothing surprising here, yes, but we created our own language, which says that there is eyes on, eyes off, there is hands on, hands off, there is a driver or no driver, that's it. So the way we see that there is eyes on, hands on, this is the regular uh, driving assist, like ACC, like lane keeping uh, assist. Then there is eyes on, hands off. This is a, a category that I'm going to, I'm going to spend some more uh, time on it. Um, um, so this eyes on, uh, this eyes on, hands off, is kind of an interaction between man and machine. And then there is eyes off, hands off. This is what we call level three, level four, which I don't want to use that language anymore. Uh, you know, hands off, and legally you can uh, disconnect from the driving experience within that particular uh, ODD. And then the last one, there is no driver. When there is no driver, you need additional mechanism, which is the teleoperation. So when we talk about uh, eyes off, as I mentioned before, there are ODDs, operational design uh, domains. And I, I listed here kind of a sample of ODDs, right? Highway only below 60 kilometers per hour in lane. So the car does not change lane, doesn't go above 60 kilometers uh, per hour. 
on the, on the highway. So this is kind of a basic ODD. Many car makers are introducing this kind of uh, ODD in the next uh, few years. Second ODD, the same thing, but up to 130 kilometers per hour. Sounds more useful. The next ODD is the car, the car can go on, uh, on ramp, off ramp, uh, autonomously. So you, you punch in, a, in an address, and, and to navigate to that address, you need to go through five different highways. The system would do this autonomously, right? So this is part of the ODD. Next ODD, you add arterial roads with traffic lights, and then with signal traffic, with signal junctions. The next one is rural, and, and, and you can see how you can build uh, the ODDs. We say that the useful tipping point is when it's highways on and off ramp up to 130 kilometers per hour. Anything below that, we really believe it's not that useful. And the way we define usefulness is that once you activate, once you activate the eyes off system, you'd like it to be continuous until you deactivate and get to your, get to your target. You don't want within that period to be on and off, on and off, on and off, right? And then it becomes less, in our, in our mind, not useful at all. For example, in ODD1 with the 60 kilometers per hour, okay, you're 61 kilometers per hour, you need to take control. You're 59 kilometers per hour, the car takes uh, control. Or without doing on and off ramps, you have five highways to go, and then you have to be alert which, which highway need to kind of exit, uh, because the system will not do it uh, on its own. So the, really, the useful tipping point is starting from ODD3 in this, uh, in this chart. The system ODD should be much larger than the customer ODD. Even from the customer point of view, the car never changes lane. From the system point of view, the car needs to do much more than that. The third one is expansion of ODD. What you don't want to create is a moonshot, going, you know, big, making a big investment in ODD1, and then when you go to ODD2, you have to do, redo everything. Another moonshot, and another moonshot, another moonshot. What you want to create, you want to create a path which is incremental and modular. All the investment you have done in the validation of ODDI is valid to go to ODDI plus one. And then it's an incremental investment. This is, this is what you want to build. Otherwise, from a business perspective and validation perspective, and when I get to validation, you'll, you'll see how, how much effort is made in order to validate an eyes off, an eyes off system. So, so here's an example. You don't need to read all this text because I'll explain. So this is kind of the, the conventional way of going from ODD to ODD. So if, say, for example, you start with a, a traffic jump pilot. This is kind of below 60 kilometers per hour. You have limited sensors because they're not changing uh, lanes. You have limited software to process the sensors because the, 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 the environment is relatively simple. You don't have, you know, uh, you know, pedestrian jumping in or things like that. You don't have roundabouts. So, so in terms of your perception, right, you're, you're solving a much simpler problem than a car in navigating in an urban environment. So sensors, perception maps, you know, maybe you don't even need high definition maps for, for such a simple uh, problem. So, so your investment here is, is, is limited. Now you want to go to a higher ODD, say highway, highway pilot, 130 kilometers per hour, going from on-ramp to, uh, to off-ramp. All of a sudden, sensors is different. All of a sudden, you need to do more, it's not only more compute, but more understanding of the, of the environment. Now, all of a sudden, you need high-definition uh, maps. Your driving policy, your, your de decision-making of the car is much more complicated. So all the investment you did in ODD1 doesn't really help you. You're kind of starting again and, and creating another moonshot. And then you go up, another moonshot. You go up, another, another moonshot. What Mobileye designed is the following. Is we put all the moonshot in the first column, what we call supervision. It's a full ODD. I'll show you clips in a moment. It's a full ODD. Drives everywhere, urban, arterial, highway. Uh, it has a, the driving policy to support this full ODD. So it's not only the sensors and uh, so it's a, you, know, you have high resolution cameras, eight megapixel uh, cameras. So from a sensing perspective, you have the sufficient resolution to understand the scene at high details. You have the compute to, uh, to build your environmental model, what we call sensing state. You have the driving policy to enable a full uh, ODD and you have the high definition maps scalable for driving everywhere. Right, so this is, this is one big moonshot. Now going for uh, an eyes off system, you just need to add redundancy. So you're adding now active sensors for redundancy. You don't need to update your maps because you already built high definition maps 
in the first column. You don't need to update your driving policy because your driving policy already was full, uh, full uh, LTD. All what you need, you need to add an active sensor for redundancy. And the number of sensors and their placement depends on the ODD. And you need to add more compute, but you already built your environmental model, you already built your driving policy, you already have the high definition maps. So then it becomes incremental. What, 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 how do we go and validate an eyes off uh, system? And, and the key challenges is first how to build an AI system that on one, on one hand doesn't have no reproducible errors, because I said it's not possible to have a reproducible error. So no reproducible errors. Second, how do you uh, guarantee uh, this level of accuracy? Now, when we are talking with, with car makers, it's a very, very consistent number. We're talking about you know, highway ODD, uh, the requirement is 10 to the power of 7 hours of mean time between failure. That means you need to prove that the car will drive 10 million miles without creating an accident. This is about 10 times better than human drivers. So how do you build a system? I'm not talking about validating. How do you build a system that you, kind of the, the, the engineering team, would be convinced that it will reach that goal? The next challenge is how to prove. I build a system, I'm certain. So either I go and collect 10, 10 to the power of seven miles, 10, uh, hours of uh, driving, 10 million hours of driving, or 400 million miles. How, how do I prove? I need to prove to regulators, I need to prove to the public that you know, the system really meets that goal of the accuracy goal. Right? The first layer, we call, this, you know, our, our, we call this true redundancy. The way we build a system is through uh, uh, complete redundancy. Supervision is only cameras. As you saw, supervision can do a full end-to-end -end autonomous driving, but it requires eyes on because it's not, that, it's not sufficiently safe to say that I'm better than a human uh, driver. Right? Uh, so we have a subsystem of only cameras, a subsystem of only active sensors, each of them building an environmental model, a sensing state completely separate from the other. So say I, I collect 10 to the power of four hours, 10,000 hours of driving of real data to validate the camera-only subsystem. And then I collect 1,000 hours of real data to uh, validate the radar ladder system. If those were statistically independent, then the mean time between failure is the product, if they were completely independent, uh, 10 to the 7. So this is not a proving methodology. This is a building methodology. Second, we uh, create uh, uh, a photorealistic simulation. Now, many companies in this space you know, build simulators. What's unique about Mobileye, and this is really unique, what we do is we take our REM, which is all the world is mapped, and from REM, we hallucinate three-dimensional world. And we have all the world maps, uh, all the world mapped. So we can, cre so we can create a simulation of the planet. But this, this, is, this is something very, very unique to, uh, uh, to Mobileye. Now comes the last stage of proving. And this is what we call shadow mode. Mm -hmm. right? So you have now the system with the sensors and the compute, with the build of the true redundancy and the simulation. You are launching it, but with an eyes-on capability for a period of time. What is that period of time? Say uh, launching 100,000 vehicles. Say you're driving four hours a week with the uh, hands off uh, activated. So after six months, you collect the 10 to the power of seven hours. Right? So you can then prove after six months that have you met the 10 to the power of seven goal or not. So this is the proving stage. So these are the three stages, two stages of build, one stage of, of, of uh, proving. As I said before, the real challenge in this area, in this domain, is not the technology. It is really the business. How do you go and build a business? Uh, a business that eventually is, is healthy, right? So Mobileye has no intention of becoming a full operator of fleets of uh, cars. We don't want to become an Uber or, or, or a Lyft. Uh, so we designed our, our business in partnership, two types of partnerships. One is with platform makers. And another partnership would demand with public transport uh, operators and, and transport network uh, uh, companies that those that create uh, demand. For the demand generation, we're using our reference, this is the NEO vehicle, we're using that to do uh, POCs. And with the, uh, the self-driving uh, platforms, we're using their platform and installing our self-driving system onto their, onto their platform. So this, they come from three 
three major players in, in this uh, uh, platform uh, makers. Two of them we, we announced in the past. The third one will be announced uh, somewhere uh, down the road. Okay, so uh, I'll finish with a few uh, takeaways. First is the mobilized uh, supervision. It's really the ultimate evolution of driving a system. Um, and then uh, what is uh, also important in supervision is it's really, it's a bridge towards eyes off. It's really the moonshot. Afterwards, it's everything incremental. And uh, lastly, uh, the, uh, the robotaxi, it's synergetic uh, partnerships. You know, we, we built the technology, and our challenge now is to make a business out of it, and not just, you know, hemorrhage. Um, so building an ecosystem, uh, you know, based on the Mobileye Drive. Mobileye Drive is our self-driving uh, system. Uh, thank you for your patience and your time. I'll end here. <laughs>